The law, in all its forms, from the street up to levels of world governance, it's there to provide structure to our lives, to prevent chaos, to prevent anarchy and safeguard us. However, with the world becoming more complex, more interconnected and more dangerous, the challenges facing lawmakers across the world in executives, legislatures and judiciaries is equally becoming more complex and much more difficult to form and enact. I'm here with Lord Goldsmith, the former Attorney General of the United Kingdom from 2001 to 2007, to discuss some of the issues facing a modern lawmaker, both on the domestic and the international stage. Lord Goldsmith, welcome. Thank you. Uh, we live in an, an, an uncertain world where laws, be they economic or of a legal basis, seem to be fragile. What therefore are the challenges facing a modern Attorney General? Today, the law is pervasive through what we do and what the government has to do in a way it never was, um, you know, 100 years ago or even 50 years ago. And people are much more attuned to what their legal rights and responsibilities are. And one of the jobs that the modern Attorney General has to do is to deal with a variety of legal issues, but help both to enable the government to achieve its policy objectives in a lawful and effective way, but also keep the government on the straight and narrow. The Attorney General is the only minister sitting in Cabinet whose job is to say, not just I don't agree with that, but you can't do that. And uh, above all, in an in era where terrorism, the threat to national security, the threat to people's lives has been a huge, huge present threat, the job of the Attorney General is to help the government strike that right balance between its two responsibilities, a responsibility to protect the people of this country, but also to protect the values on which this country is based. And those are fundamental liberties, the things which our forefathers, which our ancestors uh, fought for, um, freedom of speech, freedom of association, fair trial, uh, independence in the way that decisions of that sort are made. So it's a big task, but I think you encapsulate the role of the Attorney General. It's to make legal decisions on the basis of the law, objectively, and in accordance with the evidence. You deviate from that, then you create problems for yourself and for the people you're advising. Post 9-11, Guantanamo seemed to represent a muddying of the, uh, the moral compass of many, many nations across the world and the morality and legality seem to be slightly haywire. In your opinion, what happened during that period? Well, governments naturally wanted to know what more they could do to protect their citizens. I mean, uh, it was a, obviously it was a huge event, uh, and I think particularly in the United States, which was not used to seeing the inviolability of United States borders and its security breached in this in this way. They were shocked. And I think that the shock even affected the legal profession, which for a moment was sort of paralysed from complaining about, about some of the changes that the government in the United States made in order to, so it believed, better protect. And you understand the instincts of elected politicians saying, well, we must do what we can to protect our people. But I think you can't be short-sighted about that. You have to understand what the effect may be. For me, one of the most one of the saddest things about Guantanamo is it succeeded in turning the imagery of terrorism. The imagery of terrorism immediately after 9-11 was of the Twin Towers collapsing, of innocent people falling to their deaths. You, you could see what was happening to these people and therefore the families behind them. But those images sort of disappeared and they were replaced by images of people in orange jumpsuits, in shackles, inside metal cages. Huge public relations disaster. And I think that did the one thing that the United States didn't want to do, which was actually act as a recruiting sergeant for terrorism. More people were converted to the cause of jihad by seeing that sort of image than I think would have been by words alone before. So you've got to get these things right in principle, but you've also got to think about the policy side of them as well. And I think Guantanamo was wrong on both counts. Civil rights groups uh, would claim that the law and uh, lawmakers 
from our, our political pawns, working to recapture liberties which now increasingly threaten the power of governments. What's your response to that charge? Well, I mean, I think the way that government takes place, it's a very complex dynamic of shifting pieces of tectonic plates, if you like. Uh, and I think that all these agents all sort of have a part to play without ginger groups saying things which you think are too extreme. Sometimes you wouldn't be pushed as a government into the safer and more comfortable and the correct middle ground. So I've got no problem at all. I think, you know, this country is, uh, is very good at allowing a plurality of views, but also at, um, at, at, at not actually paying too much attention to the extremist side of it. But civil liberties groups play an important, important part in helping the government reach the right track and the right road. That doesn't mean that they agree with what the civil liberties groups say. So often they don't. But I think the dynamic is very, very helpful. Mm. The, the Iraq war, the, the, the wounds are still open. Very and much so. And many still question its yes. legality. Yes. Um, you were obviously in a prime position to see all the legal factors. Um, but what were the basic factors which led you to consider it to be a, a legal action? Well, the fundamental point is that uh, this wasn't justified on the basis of a preemptive attack or revenge or reprisal. It was on, uh, on a tight legal analysis, a tight legal basis, that the pre existing authority given by the Security Council of the United Nations, which has the authority under the United Nations Charter to enable military action to be taken, had been originally given uh, in Resolution 678 at the time of the first Gulf War, never cancelled but only suspended on the conditions that the ceasefire terms were observed, and they were not observed. So that could be revived. It needed a trigger, but the trigger was <coughs> excuse me, Resolution 1441, November 2002, unanimous resolution of the Security Council saying, you have breached it, <coughs> you are in breach of the ceasefire conditions, you have one final opportunity to comply. The, so, this principle of revival of the original authority wasn't invented for the first time in 2003. It had been used before to justify military action in Iraq after the first Gulf War, and it had then been supported not just by the UK and the US, but by the French, at least in 1993, by the Secretary General of the United Nations, Boutros Boutros Ghali, uh, in 1993, and as I subsequently discovered, by the legal advisor to the United Nations at that date. The UK is currently going through a constitutional crisis, even without a, a written constitution as such. Uh, what advice would you be giving the, uh, the future government of this country uh, in regard to legal issues it may be taking up? Well, I think there are two key elements viewed from my perspective. One is that um, the electorate has delivered a verdict, which means that no single party's ideological platform has been accepted. So whoever is in government is going to have to find a middle ground um, at least softening the edges of their own uh, ideological platform in order that it meets what the British public actually wanted. But the second part, and you would expect me to say this, is that law will play a huge part in what now happens. If there are to be reforms of our constitution, the voting system, maybe parliament, the House of Lords, cleaning up parliament, a huge issue, it needs to be done carefully. Laws actually are very powerful weapons, they're very powerful instruments, but they have to be used in the right way and they have to be manufactured in the right way because once the law is there, it can run, <clears throat> do things that are quite unintended. So think hard, examine very carefully what your lawyers are, and above all, get yourself a good attorney general. That's not a job application. I've got other things to do, but there are many other people who do the job very, very well. It's a key part of the next government. Well, Girl Smith, thank you very much for your time.